Hi, I'm Sid with Ogden Clinic, here today with Dr. Chris Hammond, neurologist who's a sleep specialist, and he's going to discuss sleep apnea. Hi. What sleep apnea is, is generally resistance in the back of the throat. We call it obstructive sleep apnea to help define what sleep apnea is. There's two types, central apnea and obstructive sleep apnea. Obstructive sleep apnea is the most common. Probably more than 10% of our population has it, enough that it should be recognized and treated. It's really an anatomical problem that comes down to it. Snoring can be an effect of a soft palate dropping too low. With gravity, that tends to pull it back and it reduces airway resistance. In addition, the tongue may be involved. And so what we need to do is look for potential resistance in the throat. Common symptoms may be the snoring alone. They can be, as a consequence, daytime sleepiness as well. Notably, if you get enough resistance in the back of the throat, it's going to disturb sleep in some way. You may not be aware of it. Um, often your bed partners are though. They certainly recognize the snoring. That's one component of sleep apnea. Another is witness apneas. Witness apneas just means you see your bed partner stop breathing. Largely that's due to enough obstruction of airflow in the back of the throat. And that will lead to an array of problems, of course, not just an effect on your oxygen, but what we call intermittent desaturations is an effect of obstruction of airflow right at this level of the soft palate, maybe the tongue. But also a consequence, and a major one of this, is fragmented sleep. It leads to stage shifting. What that entails is knocking you into a deep sleep, into a light sleep, or perhaps even waking you up altogether. Pretty obvious consequences, right? So if you're not getting that deep, refreshing sleep, the consequences of that, you wake up tired, you may wake up with uh, sluggishness, even cognitive problems. It may take a lot to get you to wake up and then take on the day. So if you are a snorer, you're not necessarily suffering from sleep apnea? Not necessarily, but if, if, certainly if you're a male that's overweight and you snore, uh, you have so. a pretty good uh, right. chance of having sleep apnea, certainly. Thank you. For more information on Dr. Hammond, visit us at ogdenclinic.com.